Hi, Dickens Reads families. Today we are going to finish reading Una Judge, Outwits the Washingtons, an enslaved woman's fight for freedom. Where we left off last week, Una had arrived in Philadelphia and she was um, meeting other blacks who were free. And so she had a taste of freedom and she wanted to know what it was like. So let's dive right in. One day, Una watched free black women selling pepper pot stew on the streets. The aroma of meat and peppers in a thick broth swirled around her. The women used whatever meat they could afford. Hard work showed on their faces, but every penny they earned was theirs to keep. They didn't call anyone master. They were free. The women who stood before her proved freedom was possible. If Una escaped and was caught, she would be beaten. The Washingtons could sell her to a faraway owner. She would never see her family again. It was a frightening thought. Una knew the Washingtons would never set her free. To gain freedom, she would have to take the first step. Did Una have the courage to run away? In February 1796, Mrs. Washington received a surprising letter. Her granddaughter, Elizabeth Betsy Park Coutis, would soon marry. Martha had news for Una. Una would be their wedding gift. Mrs. Washington's news crushed Una's spirit. Una knew Betsy well from her many visits to Mount Vernon. Una could could Una bear Betsy's harsh demands and cruel punishments? The idea of living in Virginia sent shudders through Una. In Philadelphia, Una felt freedom was within reach, but Virginia was a solid slave state. Enslaved people in Virginia who tried to escape often faced bloody beatings or were sold. Una saw her chance the day Richard Allen arrived at the president's house. Richard was a minister, a chimney sweep, and a free black man. The Washingtons hired him to clean soot from the chimneys. Una took a risk and asked him to help her run away. Reverend Allen agreed to help. He alerted his trusty circle of friends. They planned Una's escape route leading north. They would tell Una the plan one step at a time. Then, if someone reported Una, only one link in the chain of helpers would break. The others would be safe to help the next person seeking freedom. Una continued to work as hard as ever. The Washingtons had given her a few dollars to buy presents for her family. Una saved some of the money for her journey. Between her tasks, she packed small bundles of clothes. She hid them with trusted friends. One evening in May 1796, Una quietly left the presidential mansion. She slipped out the door as the family ate supper. As instructed, she made her way to a secret place. Her heart pounded as she waited for the next step. Una knew President Washington would send people looking for her. She hoped he would not punish her, punish her family, but she would never go back to her life of slavery at Mount Vernon. She didn't know what was ahead, but it would be better than what she left. Her next step was a sea trip. Her parents arranged her friends arranged passage northbound aboard the Nancy, a ship commanded by Captain Jack Bowles. After days at sea, the Nancy docked in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Una would be forever thankful to Captain Bowles. If his part in her escape was ever found out, he could be sent to jail or worse. With jumbled nerves and a racing heart, Una wrapped herself in courage. She stepped off the ship. She walked onto the land of her new home. Una searched the crowds for the family who would help her. 
What if she approached the wrong person and gave herself away? She'll be sent back to the Washingtons and face a horrible punishment. Just as her courage began to dip, a free family stepped inside and welcomed her to Portsmouth. Her doubts turned into excitement. Una quickly looked for a job. Runaways had to be careful. The skills that made her valuable to Mrs. Washington could also make others suspicious. People gossiped. News might travel back to Philadelphia about a black woman in New Hampshire who was talented with a needle and thread. Instead, Una worked hard cleaning houses and cooking for white families. She didn't complain. Though she didn't earn much money, it was enough to live on with a little left over. For the first time in her life, Una's time belonged to her. She explored her new city. Portsmouth was smaller than Philadelphia and New York City, but it had a busy seaport. Shipbuilders thrived in Portsmouth. Captains delivered food and supplies up and down the Atlantic coast. Una marveled at the items for sale in shop windows. She pictured buying them with her own money. Una enjoyed the salty air. To her, it became the smell of freedom. She began to relax, but to relax completely was dangerous. No matter how careful Una was, some things were out of her control. One day she walked down the street, she saw a black a woman, she saw a woman who looked familiar. The woman's name was Elizabeth Langdon. She and her family had been frequent visitors to the presidential mansion. Una froze with fear. Maybe Elizabeth wouldn't recognize her. Una pretended she didn't see her and kept walking. But Elizabeth recognized Una. The young woman hurried home and promptly told her father about the odd sighting. Her father, a senator, informed President Washington that his runaway slave was in Portsmouth. President Washington plotted Una's return. He hired Joseph Whipple, the customs collector in Portsmouth, to find Una and force her back to Philadelphia. Whipple tried to trick Una. He lured her with news of a job. Una met with him, but realized there was no job. He wanted her to return to the Washingtons. Una knew it was not wise to anger this man, so she agreed to sail back to Philadelphia, but she had a trick of her own. Whipple waited at the dock for Una, she never came. The Washingtons were furious when they heard, but President Washington was about to retire after two terms. Making Una return by force would cause bad publicity. He did not want to end his presidency with news of a runaway slave in the newspaper. Meanwhile in Portsmouth, Una met a free black man named Jack Stans. He worked on a ship and sailed away for months at a time. They fell in love. But when they applied for a marriage certificate, Whipple turned up again. He had not forgotten his duty to the president. He couldn't force Una back to the Washingtons, but he could make her life difficult. Whipple cho used his power to delay the marriage paperwork. It didn't stop Una and Jack. They applied for a certificate in Greenland, a neighboring town. Una and Jack were legally married January 14, 1797. The next year, Una and Jack had a baby daughter, Eliza. Una continued to work hard and earn money. Slowly, her worries faded and she began to enjoy her life. Under law, she was still enslaved, but she lived her life as though she was a free woman. President Washington, however, could not forget the slave who outwitted him. He and Mrs. Washington still fumed over Una's escape. 
they wanted her back. One night, while Jack was away at sea, Una and baby Eliza had an unexpected visitor. It was Burrell Bassett, Mrs. Washington's nephew. Una recognized him right away. She had seen him many times in the Washington's home. Una knew why he was at her door. The Washingtons had not given up. Bassett said the Washingtons would grant her freedom if only she returned to Mount Vernon. Una knew better. She stood her ground and refused to go with him. Bassett was just as stubborn as Una. He couldn't believe that a slave would refuse to obey him. He hatched another plot. This time, Bassett planned to kidnap Una. He was visiting the Langdoms and discussed his plan. One of the Langdoms' servants overheard Bassett talking and told Una. Una acted quickly. She packed her family's belongings and wrapped baby Eliza in a warm blanket. Then she hurried to find a driver with a horse and carriage. They sped toward Greenland. A free black family took them in. The family watched over them until Jack returned. Once Jack arrived home, Una and her family settled in Greenland. Under law, Una Marie Judge Staines remained a runaway for the rest of her life. Not even the President of the United States could convince Una to go back to Mount Vernon. Una had carved out a life of her own where she answered to no master but herself. A newspaper reporter once asked if Una regretted the hard life she led. No, she said, I am free. And that's the story of Una Judge outwits the Washingtons, an enslaved woman's fight for freedom by Gwendolyn Hooks. I hope you enjoyed the story and until next time, happy reading!